Hey guys, this is Dimitri and welcome back to another Hardware Canucks review. So the Nvidia Shield is definitely a unique device, which is meant to show off the integration of different technologies from Nvidia, like Tegra Zone, GeForce Experience and the seamless communication between the two. The Shield is not meant to replace nor compete with consoles, while providing a similar casual gaming experience. The Shield is a whole new portable solution for gamers, but at $299, this really is a novelty item considering you require a dual band router for perfect connection and a GTX 650 or higher to enable PC streaming because earlier graphics cards do not have the built-in H.264 encoder. Specs wise, the Shield houses a Tegra 4 quad-core processor with up to 1.9 GHz, 2GB of DDR3 RAM, 16GB of built-in flash memory with a 28.8 Watt hours battery and it's running pure Android Jelly Bean 4.2.1. The 5 inch touchscreen is 1280 by 720 pixel display with a PPI of around 294 so you never see any pixels plus the viewing angles are excellent with basically a 180 degree screen tilt to suit any holding style. There's also quite a bit of resistance on the screen so it doesn't flop around which makes this a perfect fit for the shield. My main complaint here is the bezel size, which is quite large and minimizes the total real estate of the display. Also, it's quite easy to make out the touch grid and brighter conditions, but of course that does not affect functionality. The form factor of the shield is something every gamer is going to be familiar with, as it resembles some sort of console controller and the body is very comfortable to hold, but actually quite heavy at 579 grams. Ergonomically, it's top-notch, but I find the shield quite large and nowhere near to what we've come to expect as portable. I mean, you can't fit it in a pocket and will require a bag of some sort. Now, luckily, Nvidia does sell the optional carrying pouch for an extra $40 with a small pocket to house the charging brick and the USB cable with a cleverly placed cutout at the back to charge your shield. The two joysticks at the front are extremely smooth but not too light either and there is some resistance as they are always return to the middle. And the rest of the buttons at the front have a clicky feel and we've never experienced any key jams. The trigger and bumper buttons are well within reach and also very responsive and never jam. So overall it's a well designed gaming controller from the balanced weight to how the buttons feel to the materials used. The five buttons in the center are your controls for the Android, so adjusting the volume, revealing all your running apps, back and play button, uh, and in the center this is your shield button, which when held reveals a few system options, and when pressed once opens up Tegra Zone. This is also the only button that is illuminated, although I think all of the five buttons should be to allow flawless navigation in darker environments. All the connections are located at the rear with a 3.5mm headphone jack, micro USB, mini HDMI and a micro SD card slot for expandable storage. Now at the time of this review, the micro SD slot cannot be utilized to store games or apps, which is rather disappointing, but a future update will get rid of this limitation. Now throughout our testing, the shield held up pretty good with temperatures with rear exhaust that helps to keep the shield cool, although not completely silent as fan noise was audible. The shield has an amazing pair of stereo speakers that are not only loud but extremely clear and non-distortive at higher volume. Also lowering the lid slightly will allow a bit more directionality control. Now there isn't much customization with the shield, like there are no other color options, but the top magnetic shield-like cover can be swapped for a glossy or a carbon fiber tag, which at $20 a piece is a ridiculous price for such a useless tag. Alright, so finally let's talk about how the shield handles regular Android games and later for PC streaming. So given this is an Android device, we get a very similar Android experience, just in a different form factor. Opening it up, accessing Google Play to populate the Shield with applications is easy. But the issue is recognizing which app supports Shield or a controller. Going into the description of each desired app is inefficient and currently there's no icon to indicate whether or not a controller support is available. But this is where Tegra Zone comes in handy, as the Shield Store is basically a shortcut for all the supported games that can be purchased through Google Play. And this works seamlessly, and while there's a good variety of shooters, racing and adventure games available with excellent graphics and performance, the supported games list is quite short, and quite frankly they either get dull quickly or are too short. 
Now, luckily, these games are around two to five dollars, so you pretty much get what you pay for. Now, let's talk about the main selling point of the Shield, and that's PC streaming. It takes upon a similar idea as the Nvidia Grid, using a host PC to process and render out a display and wirelessly transmit the video stream to the Shield. With the help of a built in H.264 encoder on Kepler's GPU, this is possible. We tested it using the Asus Dark Knight dual band router with PC connected through the Ethernet port and the shield through the 5 GHz band to avoid any wireless interference with the 2.4 GHz band. Opening up TegraZone, it will start searching for compatible PCs. Sometimes it doesn't find it upon initial boot, but after it's connected, there were no issues and it quickly navigates into a menu where you can access Steam and already installed supported games. Launching Steam, you enter Big Picture mode, where you can navigate into your library to view games and other added executables. I've added Premiere, which you can see opens up perfectly, and this opens up possibilities for other gaming services like Origin, for example, to be used with Shield flawlessly. Tapping the screen with two fingers while streaming will give you the option to quit the app in use and open up a keyboard that will definitely come in handy for logging in. Obviously, because of the screen size, the touch interface, and the controller, not all games are going to be favorable for the shield. For example, strategy games like Company of Heroes is a complete write-off, but Dirt 3 is another story. Basically, racing games and shooters are blended well within the shield environment and provide an enjoyable experience while away from your PC playing your favorite games. Now, battery life was also impressive with around 6 hours of Android games and 12 plus hours of PC streaming, which is plenty enough on one charge. When it comes to input lag, the Shield, as long as your network isn't hogged by traffic, performed almost flawlessly even from 6 meters away with a few walls in between. There was no noticeable lag, which means gaming on the Shield is fun. And it's not meant to be competitive, but instead casual gaming experience off your PC. Of course, PC streaming is not without its issues, but considering it's only in beta mode, we are expecting certain things to improve, like audio channels sometimes were mixed up, suffering frame rate during heavy traffic, and dropped connection during initial scan. But the Shield portrays a good representation of the future of portable gaming. The Shield is a blazingly fast Android device, with absolute amazing pair of stereo speakers, excellent battery life and a really nice touch interface. As a gaming device, it works, as ergonomics are top notch and despite its heavy weight, you'll most often have it on your lap or on some surface. The Shield controller is very well built and provides responsive navigation with the joysticks and a more proper experience for Android games that support the Shield. Also the ability to stream your PC games into the Shield without lag and enjoy a casual race match or finish a Crisis 3 level with the help of a seamless integration of GeForce Experience, Tegra Zone, and Steam. However, there are unavoidable issues with the Shield, starting with the large, bulky, inefficient size that could definitely see improvement in future revisions, starting with a larger screen, more sleek and lighter body, and perhaps more customization in terms of color. Now, while the Android and PC gaming list is quite short at the moment, it is bound to grow and expand the gaming potential of the Shield. And in order to have the full Shield experience, GTX 650 or higher and a dual band router is a must, which add up to the overall price of the package. But it is undoubtedly a unique demonstration of what Nvidia is capable of. It's definitely not for everyone, but we can sure appreciate the potential the Shield brings into portable gaming environment. So given you guys have now seen Shield work and its hopeful promising future, would you consider getting it? Tell us why or why not in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next one.